welcome you to my YouTube channel. Um, the whole purpose of this video is to just to show you some of the things I've done with this um, game demo, which is a space style that I created back in 1992, see November 1992. Um, working on the ebook still, but I'm still doing the screenshots for the Commodore 64 because I really want to redesign this whole thing. I'm not really happy with, never was really happy with the way it looks and everything, but it was more about, you know, really coming up with a real original game design for somebody instead of just trying to demonstrate what I'd done before, which really wasn't very effective with this game. The better game I wrote was on the Atari. I actually finished a game back in the days called Dead Man, which can be found on my channel too. But the whole purpose is just to kind of show you how some of this works and how some of the assembly language works in it. I've had a few people asking me to show more assembly demos, so I thought I'd just kind of show this one to you. And eventually that all this source code will be accessible on the website. Now I've had a few people ask me about the downloads. Um, I don't own um, the XM441 so I can't really transfer the files to from the Commodore to the PC. Although I'm really thinking about purchasing it. So we'll see what comes of it available later. But for now I just wanted to kind of show this to you. This is obviously the... Um, oops. This is uh, the code demos that I've copied here. And I wanted to um, use this to kind of as a guide to show you. Let's kind of move this over here a little bit so I can show you. So, basically what we're looking at here. I'm going to just shorten this maybe. Try to squeeze everything on the screen so it doesn't look like I'm not. Okay, so there we go. So basically this uh, program is broken down into multiple different routines. This is uh, the first part of it. Everything you see at the beginning of a semi language, and these are very common in semi language, these are actually known as um, labels. And basically it's another way of looking at a variable in basic. So on the Commodore 64, the variables are actually consisted of two, two letters, like SP. But of course when you use a semi language, you can use an entire label. This, this assembler, which I'll show you. People have asked me which um, assembler I use. This is the one that I used to, um, because I'm going to come in very good. This is the one I used, the Commodore 64 assembler development system that I used back in the days to create this um, demo, if you would. It comes up with its own assembler and its high loader inside the game itself. Um, so I wanted to kind of show you how this is broken down anyway. So. After you get through the equates, and this is where you set up all the variables through, to give you more of an in-depth on this, um, I guess I'll take this a little stretch further for people who might want to know. I did this on the Atari before, so I wanted to kind of skip over to the Commodore and show you. Show you. This book right here is the map in the 64, it's 64C. It's your best guide for learning how to navigate around memory in the Commodore 64. And if you see right here where I have SPRY, SPRX53248 in the book right here, this is actually where the sprites X and Y positions are stored. So they're all listed in order by number from 0 all the way up to 65, 536 or 5 or whatever it is. And this is how you figure out what these are doing. Like for example, 2040 here, you see it's a sprite pointer. If you go in the book here, um, right here, you can see, oh shit, there my book up. You can see right here, this is where the, the sprite pointers are located, video screen area. Right below there it says um, the video memory area. So that's where the sprites are stored at. And I think I just, I was like the wrong one actually, right here it is on the back. So it's uh, two the sprite shape data pointers. That's where the sprites are created and where you store the images for the sprite. For example, as I'm moving in the game here, each uh, position here of uh, the pitfall Harry that's moving, that's an individual sprite location that's being stored in 2040, 2041, 2042, and so on. And that's how you store the pictures. So that's the whole point of this book too, really to show you some of the guides of how, the, um, how, to, st how to start 
putting together your own actual game. And I want to try to take that from a more design perspective rather than just from a, a logic perspective. Because people might get confused if you do it that way. I've been told to try to, you know, come up with something original instead of just trying to repeat what other people have done. And that's what I want to do for people. I really want to I really want to get them a good plan or a good layout for game design as I've learned it. Okay, so these right here, you see character 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and it goes down here all the way up to um, 10 here. This is the character set, so everything you see in the game from this pot here, this door, this um, pipe system to the floor here, this is all designed in a character set inside, deep inside your computer. So you can redefine the characters and change them into different types of graphics. That's the whole point of the Commodore 64. It's um, popular for multicolor graphics. You can change the characters to have blended colors inside of them by lining the bits up side by side. So I won't go into a lot of perspective on it, but that's basically what that is. This right here, phase RT and phase LT. So this is the phase right and the phase left position. So when I'm moving around here and I'm firing, that's obviously to the right and this is the left position. So it just draws the, the missile in that direction. It's basically all that's doing. Just drawing the missile. Here's some more of the character sets. This is the initialization of the multicolors and the individual screen colors. You can kind of see here as I kind of broke it down. This is the positions of the sprite starting at 40 at 170. So he's going to be over position. Basically, it puts him right up here in the corner when he starts off in the first room, of course, at 40 and 170. And this right here, 147 print. This is used to clear the screen, so it's another way of using the print CHR string 147 in basic. This is just a move, movement routine. Um, excuse me, this is a, I call it a move, but this is actually the joystick initialization. Sets up the movement of the joystick here. You can see it's left, right, move down, and move up. Move up, move down, move left, right, and so on. And this right here is the left position of the player. So when you're moving left, that's going to draw all the movement left and takes over firing and everything else that goes in here, including crossing the boundary here. You know how when the sprites hit at this certain edge right here, they'll flip over back here unless you reset location 53264 to move on. That's basically all I did there. Allows them to skip over that point. And why do you ask on that? That's because a sprite cannot be more than 255, um, excuse me, a memory location cannot contain more than 255 bytes. So in a semi language, what you do is you flip it to the high bit and it flips it back to zero and allows it to continue on. So 